In this video, I'm going to talk about pretty much everything that just sits in here and depending on what work you're doing, you may or may not need to do uh, some or all of these. But the way this is set up, we've just got a baffle at the front here. You've got the electrical harness, the plug goes down there and then that rest that goes down to the valve body underneath. We've got the oil pump here that is driven by the, the clutch pack. So it slots into these slots there and moves that around. Uh, we've got our two clutch pressure sensors there uh, and then behind that we've got the pump and then behind that we've got the uh, what I would call the intermediate plate uh, and that's the thing that does a lot of the distribution of oil to the different things so from the underside and the valve body it can uh, distribute oil directly underneath to different positions but anything on this side has to go by this intermediate plate. Uh, if you need to remove uh, the intermediate plate, obviously all this stuff needs to come off uh, as well and finally because of the way the wiring is routed you'll need to remove the valve body so we can remove the wiring entirely. That needs to go out the bottom so we can pull the intermediate plate out. When you're working on anything in here I would suggest having a big rag there because if you drop anything it just goes straight down these holes into the oil pan which is a complete pain on the backside. So um, I would suggest to do that. To remove this baffle here, there are three screws there, there, and there's the one from the underside here, which comes from the oil pan. So you'll have to take the oil uh, pan off and get access to the one underneath here, which goes up into the bottom of that. And then this baffle just comes out. To remove the pump, the first thing we need to do is remove this screw here, because we need to pull off this uh, sprocket. To do that, I wouldn't pull this off straight away. I'd be leaving that on and just jamming maybe a rag or something in here. And when we're talking later on on the other side there, just so we can hold this in place to remove it. But then once it screws out, and that is an M6 screw. So on install, I'm gonna use 10, point, 10 Newton meters. That's a class 8.8. .8. Now that can come off. And this is splined on here quite tightly. And then that will just come off. And then we have access to the pump and the screws underneath. So I can remove that and then the pump will, come, pump will come out. However, before then, I'll just need to disconnect this electrical harness here to this pressure sensor. It's the black bit is part of the pressure sensor. The brown is the plug. And the back here is where you want to press in to allow that to come free. I can then release this screw here. Now some of these are T30, some of these are T27. This one's T27. That can now get moved out of the way and now I can get access to those screws to remove the pump. And with those six screws removed, the pump will just come straight out. There's the pump there. Your typical oil pump. It gets an oil feed from the back here just for the bearing which slots into that shaft there and obviously one side is the, uh, the input and one side is the output. To remove the pressure sensors I'm just going to use a 24mm spanner and they'll just pop straight off. And there's a sensor there. Uh, to put those back in, the torque for those, I clearly don't have a manual for these but that is an M10 by 1 which is exactly the same as the differential drain plug that's aluminium as well as that so i would use the same spec so i'm going to use 10 newton meters which is what we use for the drain plug when i install these one of the difficulties as you can see though is getting a, a torque wrench onto this is going to be difficult because it's a 24 mil socket size you would need a long socket to go over that because a standard socket won't go over that so that's going to be a little bit difficult so again like I've done before on many things on the car, I am going to use just a normal spanner like that and I'm going to use my luggage scales back here to work out exactly what weight I need to put on it. I know at 10 newton meters that's one a kilogram at a meter. And I know this is 23 centimeters long out to where I would apply the, the pressure there. So that's going to be about 4.3 kilos back here which is going to give me that 10 newton meters. So that's the way I would do it. The two pressure sensors that are used for the clutches, uh, the part numbers on those, I'll put up on the screen in a moment, but after doing a bit of research, it seems as these are exactly the same part as used on 
uh, a newer a nine speed auto that ZF make uh, called the 9HP48. It's also, I think, licensed to Chrysler and they make another version uh, which uses the same thing again. It has a different part number, but when I do a bit of an internet search of the parts that I see that are on that particular valve body, I see this part number as well as another part number. So if you do an internet search for the uh, ZF 9HP48 dog clutch pressure transducer, you'll get one of these. Okay, so, and they're not expensive, they might pick them up for 50 bucks or so. If you need to remove the intermediate plate, there's this big thing uh, back here. Uh, once you have disconnected all of this, uh, you'll need to remove the, uh, the long drive shaft flange. Uh, have a look at the drive shaft video I've made to do that, but that's pretty simple. You just put a, a slide hammer on it and it just pops out straight away. Uh, also, if you haven't removed the valve body already, that will need to be removed and you'll then need to remove the electrical harness down through this hole here and out of the way because the intermediate flange can't come out whilst this electrical harness is in there and the electrical harness won't go down through the hole until the valve body is removed. Uh, unfortunately, you'll just need to do all of that uh, if you want to get this uh, intermediate plate out. And then once you've done that, then we can start to unscrew all of these and this thing will just pop straight off. To disconnect the electrical harness from here, you'll have to push the plug in uh, from the top here after removing the silver clip up the top. And then there are a couple of clips that hold uh, the harness in place. My advice would be to take a photograph of how all these fit together so it all goes back in the same spot afterwards. And with the harness removed out of the way, now I'm just going to remove all of these aluminium screws They've got the baffle up the top here, which just protects the breather. Uh, but all of these are 40 millimeters long, except for a single one here, which is 12 millimeters. And then with all those screws removed, now we can just wiggle this thing out. It sits on a big O-ring on the inside, which is the thing that's holding it on. And eventually, it just wiggles free. And out it comes. Uh, on the inside here, we've got a, a seal, uh, which seals on the inside here between the two oil sections. There is a roller needle bearing here. You can see the inputs to the different clutches, uh, lubrication uh, at the back there. And we've also got this O-ring here, which is the thing that seals on the inside of this face there. What's also interesting is that that hole, there is a weep hole, and if you follow where all these channels go, that goes to, you can see the, the plug directly underneath the plug there. If you get a leak in here, so this seal stops working, that's where it's gonna weep out of underneath that plug. To fit the intermediate plate, uh, make sure that everything is spotlessly clean uh, on both sides because these faces need to uh, seal perfectly well. And then, as you would expect, we're just going to gently put that in. And a big O-ring at the back there. We're going to push that into place. 